Hey legends, welcome back to part five, I reckon it is, of the SR20 uh, 200B Datsun build. Uh, today's video, what are we doing, what are we doing, what are we doing? We've got a few jobs on the go, but the first thing, the main bit of today's video is knocking this exhaust out. So if you've been watching, uh, you've seen that obviously last video, I got the engine back in, everything's good to go on that end. I actually got engine oil in the engine, so that's a good start. Uh, we're making progress there. Next piece of the puzzle is a full exhaust. Uh, a couple mufflers in this one. Uh, if you've seen my videos before, I've done at least one one video on exhaust. Jeez, I can't remember now. Uh, I've done the VN exhaust, but that was very basic. No mufflers and stuff in that. So far, I need to put a muffler in it still. Um, but yeah, pretty straightforward. Obviously, headers, collector, V-band, uh, three inch, to two and a half inch reason being is I could not get uh, like a reducer and back down to two and a half inch coming out of there. Once again, I also could have put a two and a half reducer on the uh, headers, like on the collector sort of thing, and then went back down and then, but then it would have ended up too low. It's already underneath the chassis rail by a little bit. Um, it's tucked onto the body as much as possible. Uh, but yeah, it's turning out pretty good. So. Flex, this is a, this is an Aeroflow flex, I reckon. Um, there's obviously a few different styles of flexes, I think. Like this one looks the neatest, to be honest. Uh, I'm just not sure whether they make a little bit of a rattle because um, it does have like an overlapping pipe on the inside. And yeah, if that pipe isn't super tight, so I have just got in there with a hammer and actually just knocked that with a, well, hammer and chisel and just put a like little dent in there to, to stop it from moving sort of thing. Um, and hopefully that means it will not make any vibrations. Uh, these are just like cheap eBay mufflers, um, obviously two and a half inch full system basically, like I said, from three inch there. Uh, the tricky bit on this car is going to be that bit. Uh, so the exhaust actually goes through the cradle on this car. Um, and I have made this little slip joint. Get out of there. Yeah, she got to go through there. Uh, it's it's going to be okay. Um, like, I'll work my way through it, but the problem with this here exhaust is obviously that that has got to go through it. And obviously this is where it is going to uh, have the most chance of rattling against the body. And what's more annoying than an exhaust that rattles on the body? Uh, probably nothing. So yeah, what I think I'm going to do is somehow Solid mount. Obviously, this is uh, an old mount here that the previous exhaust was on. Uh, I'm not going to, yeah, utilize this part of it, but I will use that bolt and we'll, yeah, we'll make something happen there. I think we can make a small, small bit of plate, probably the bolts to this bolt, uh, and then we'll just, yeah, use maybe a bit of this rubber between the mount and the bolt. Uh, just to reduce because it's still going to make some sort of vibration noise um, Yeah, to hopefully reduce that anyway, so um, But yeah, once we get through there uh, Yeah, slip joint once we get through there uh, It is just going to be underneath the axle and then back up here to uh, A muffler that will sit there, which is that one once again I'm pretty sure it's just an eBay muffler two and a half inch this Possibly could have been for something else that Ev had in the works. Um, but yeah, she's going to end up something up there like that. But first things first, let's get that exhaust uh, to this part so we can mount it up and weld that piece out, I reckon, uh, before we go too far with it. But yep, let's get stuck into it.
Stoked, stoked. Uh, yeah, finally. So how'd you like that? That's how you make an exhaust in a couple minutes, hey? <laughs> um, I have a couple things left to do on this exhaust. So uh, there's some hangers at the back that I'm going to do, uh, not today. I feel like this is the recurring story for me. It's just, I don't have enough time to do all this. Um, so once again, this weekend, I'm going drifting at Tail and Bend for Drifting SA round four and five. Uh, but I'm not competing. I am doing pro rides. So this is another weekend where once again, if you wanted to, you can come for a ride in my Corolla, Nick's Corolla, uh, or several of the other uh, Drifting SA cars. Yeah, so I've got a busy week this week preparing for it. So what's today? Today, when this video goes up, it'll be Friday. Uh, so yeah, tomorrow and Sunday, I'll be out at Tail and Bend. Um, but I'm trying to get this to a certain point in this video, uh, and also finish the Corolla, load the Corolla, pack all my tools, pack all my spares, busy. Anyway, um, so yeah, it turned out really good actually. Um, like I'm still going to drop this exhaust off and clean it all. I'll clean up all the welds. You can see there's still a couple welds, one there, one there, uh, one there and one there that aren't finished, right? Uh, like I said, uh, I'm going to drop this exhaust back off. Not this week. Um, I'm not sure. There's a couple bits that I'm waiting for. Uh, so I need some springs for the headers, basically, to hold the slip joints in. Uh, and this tight little slip joint in here, I need a spring for that bad boy. So once I get those springs, then I can weld them on in position and then pull everything back off, clean it all, get it all done. And obviously I still have to weld that head flange um, where the head is bolt to the engine. Still need to weld that out. Uh, what did I end up doing? Uh, like I said, V-band flex uh, rubber mount for, so this is actually the standard uh, Sylvia Skyline mount. Uh, I did modify this bracket. Um, so basically the, the standard mount sits down really low. Um, but I modified that so that it sits up at a decent level, decent height. Um, so we've got a little bit of flex here, um, but then all that back half is all gonna be solid mounted. Um, reason being is because how tight that is through there. Um, I'm hoping, like, it's, there's an air gap in there, right? Which is why I've solid mounted it. Uh, I'm hoping we can get away with it. Um, to be honest, I would have liked to have drop the cradle uh, and made that, like the hole that that uh, exhaust passes through a lot bigger. Um, didn't have the time and um, Evan is actually going to do some camber modifications on this. I was going to do them in this build, but I might do them another day perhaps. Um, but yeah, so Ev's gonna do some camber modifications to the cradle, so the cradle will be coming out again. Uh, so when it does, uh, we'll make some modifications to that uh, little tube where the exhaust passes through. What else did I do? So yeah, obviously full two and a half, muffler, absolutely sent me on a bum steer. Have a look at this, got me worried. Cause I like, I looked at the muffler and I was like, yep, that's the way the flow goes. Mounted it all up, took the stuff off. 
It says flow the other way. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> and I got real worried. I rang Ev and I was like, uh oh, I've made a whoopsie. Nah. Um, I rang Ev and I said, like, this muffler looks the same backwards and forwards. Like, do you know anything about it? Because he just ordered it off eBay. You look through it like one way or the other way. It looked exactly the same. And he goes, oh, actually, I think one of those mufflers that I bought recently had a like, had the opposite flow on each side. And fair enough, on the top, <laughs> the flow direction is that way. Um, so yeah, what a stitch up. Damn muffler. Anyway, so that's sorted. I have not mounted the exhaust pack here, right? I have a couple little sneaky mounts I've still got to make. So as you can see, a bit of cardboard, right? But it's obviously flexed out of the way a bit, which is why it's not touching the muffler, but you can kind of see how it is going to end up. I decided to do it that way because this is probably going to be the strongest part of the muffler, uh, that or this section. Um, but I didn't want to weld it to this section because it would look shite from back here, right? Um, but it ended up being pretty good. Like that muffler actually just sits a little bit that way from where that is, but um, yeah, turned out pretty good. Definitely happy with that. The other thing on this exhaust was obviously where it goes under the diff or over the diff, right? Um, Ev kind of wanted to, to go over the diff, um, but it was pretty much impossible to do it that way, to be honest, uh, just because of the size of that hole where that passes through um, and where the slip joint is. And obviously by the time you have a slip joint and then a bend, you still have to be able to get that slip joint on and off sort of thing. And obviously you can, you could fit the like the back half of the exhaust and then fit the front half and but i wanted it to be pretty simple you know what i mean a lot easier than that so um anyway decided to go under the diff but i got the clearance really good on it so you can see the bottom of the control arm which sits about there so that's about level um yeah so i got a few mil clearance on that got some clearance on this obviously this is at full droop too uh, so yeah, I'm very confident that that's not going to be an issue. You can see up, up the front there, the muffler sits a bit, little bit lower than that anyway. Uh, yeah, and the last mount for the back there is going to look something like that. Once that zip tie is not in that hole. So yeah, I'm going to finish welding out all of that, uh, when I do these mounts, which will be, like I said, probably next week. So exhaust, 99% finished, right? 90, oh, actually head flange, uh, 90 percent finish uh how many hours have i got in it so if you're looking to get a shop to do this sort of work you're going to be paying a fair bit i reckon um to be honest i would say 70 hours in it so far in this headers and the exhaust um yeah like obviously the exhaust time lapse there what was it a couple minutes you know what i mean like i don't know what i'll edit it down to but yeah i probably spent 20 probably 20 hours on the exhaust, I'd say. Uh, and so far, yeah, like closer to 50 hours on the headers maybe. So yeah, you can imagine if you're paying a shop a hundred bucks an hour for some fab work, it's gonna add up pretty quick, right? Lucky it's not getting charged that much, hey? I'm actually really happy with this exhaust. It went together very good. Used lots of bends. <laughs> There's not much straight in this exhaust. A little bit of straight there, a little bit there, a little bit there. You know what I mean? There's a couple little bits of straight in it, but there's a lot of bends in it, a lot of bends. But yeah, I am very happy with it actually. Tucked up really nice, all the lines flow. Obviously one of the main reasons I didn't go into detail with how to and everything, I have made exhaust before on the channel. I don't really want to go, this week I'm making another exhaust. So <laughs> um, yeah, so I pretty much just jumped in and knocked it out sort of thing. Um, but I've been over it before where like if you if you want to get all the, the exhaust looking really nice and neat, you can see all the like all the straight lines sort of thing. So there's like, yeah, very distinct like straight lines. This here looks a little bit messy where it goes through, but like that's just on video. In person it looks really good. It's got really nice clearance on everything. Like I said, I always try and line everything up with the seal panel um, on all of the like all of the straights sort of thing. And yeah. Anyway, let's stop talking about that. One other exciting thing, took me a while, right? But, shut some good. Lathe is up and running, and heck, it made my life easy. So, 
Uh, whenever I cut any of these, um, like bits of straight, chuck them in the lathe and like face them and everything. I haven't machined anything like other than exhaust on it yet, but so stoked to actually have a lathe operating in the shed now. Heck, it's gonna save me some time. I am very excited. All right, let's dive into the next thing on the Datto. So, where are we at? I've actually been welding flat out on this thing. Um, I come up with a couple little bits and pieces. This is one of them. Um, so this here is actually going to be uh, an overflow bottle for the radiator. So these are actually quarter inch MPT fittings. Uh, that is a eighth NPT. Uh, they're just vibrant fittings sort of thing. Um, and yeah, so this is actually going to be tucked in right next to the radiator and you can see that just sits in there. Um, obviously I'm going to weld that in. Yes, it doesn't have a filler on it, but I'm going to just fill it however I want. And it's actually gonna have a clear bit of tube in here between these two. Um, so you can see the overflow level. Uh, pretty much like I discussed it before, I think where I don't really want the engine bay looking cluttered and stuff. Um, there's a few other things. Uh, fuel filter, I'm gonna skedaddle off. Uh, that can go underneath the car, out of the engine bay. Um, and then, yeah, there's a few other things that I want to shuffle around and stuff to clean up sort of thing. Like I said, the engine bay is not getting painted yet, but eventually when Ev does it, he'll probably smooth everything. And then, uh, so I want to just prepare a little bit for that. Uh, so yeah, let's dive into something else in the engine bay that I've been fiddling around with. Um, drop her off the hoist, but that's a good start. The muffler stayed. Yep, a lot going on down there, a lot going on. Okay, one step forward, two steps backwards. Uh, no, nah, that's not true. This was probably always planned, I think. Uh, I wasn't probably going to take the manifold all the way off, uh, like what I originally planned, but it is going to be much easier to do what I need to do with this off. So diving in here, I'm just working out what to do with heater lines. If you know SRs, um, if not, I will explain it. Uh, there's this little, uh, little hose off the back of the, it kind of connects like the, the top port of the uh, engine. Uh, it loops this coolant port to uh, basically the back of the thermostat sort of thing. On an S14 or 15, there's a little like wire piece here that join this hose and yeah, the other hose that sort of sits in here together um, to one of the heater hoses. I'm doing it a little bit different, but very similar. So I'm actually going to join this hose and the other hose that sort of sits here together um, because uh, I don't want to have to pull any of the dash out to get to the heater hoses basically. So I want to utilize what's here. Um, this was obviously the L20 stuff. Uh, this one here will get shortened like so. Um, and yeah, she'll fit up no problems. Uh, but then I still got to connect um, this one and the like the other one on the bottom of the plenum. So what I have come up with is this little contraption. Uh, so a couple barbs, I just got them from my like local fab shop. A couple of NPT weld on fittings um, to suit. This here is actually the uh, temp sender for the dash. Um, so for it to work on the standard dash, I just uh, stole it out of the like L20 before that disappeared, uh, before that went back to EVS. Um, now there was, there was two options for this, right? Because this is where like this little fitting here, the, the temp sender, um, it was actually in like this side of the L20 sort of thing. Uh, so one of these here, 
that one there. Uh, went to the temp sender, which sort of sat in this area before. Uh, originally, I was going to, um, once again, if you know SRs, so S14s, uh, where the water pickup for the turbo is, is actually this little blanking spot here, uh, which is on the top coolant neck. Uh, it is blank because it is non-turbo, so yeah, not drilled out. I was going to drill it out and tap it to the right thread. Uh, that thread is, once again, uh, 3 8 NPT, I think it was. So yeah, I was gonna drill it out and use that, but you can see how very, very close to the headers it is. Uh, and I don't want to get a dodgy reading. So I made the decision to make this little doofacky. Like I could have just bought the, the standard Nissan one, which joins the two um, hoses together, but I decided to make one. This is just a little bit of uh, scrap once again. That's some inch um, like stainless tube. That's an inch stainless bend. Yeah, like I said, some barbs. Um, that one there, the lathe come in handy for. Uh, I machined down a bit of tube to fit that. Although now I have to change that because now that I've got the plenum off, I can see things better and it needs to change. This barb here is actually for a 1 8 NPT uh, sender that I have coming, um, which is the thermofan switch. Um, so I wanted to try and get that in near where the thermostat is, like behind the thermostat. So yeah, that's why I decided to make this little sucker. Um, like I said, it will sit down there and yeah, we'll get a good temp rating for both um, the gauges for the dash and for the uh, thermofan switch. So it's also keeping it mostly hidden. Um, whereas before, if I was going to go with it on this side, obviously there would have been a wire in that area. And uh, yeah, the least amount of wires there, the better. I do have to modify it though, like I just said, um, that's actually going to need a 90 on that end um, to go into this uh, standard hose. So you can see it's going to sit there and that's going to sit something like that. So yeah, that's just going to need a 90 on it, but that's easy enough to modify. You can see here, starter hooked up, alternator hooked up, uh, alternator plug in. Uh, so battery wiring, sorted out. It's literally just bolted up. Um, all the L20 wiring has bolted up for the battery and alternator and starter and everything. So you know what that means? There is oil in that engine. That means we're about to put some power to it and kick it in the guts. Not quite. Uh, I'm gonna put some power on it and I'm going to turn the engine over, hopefully, fingers crossed. Um, and I want to, like I said earlier, or maybe it was in the last video, uh, I wanna check and make sure all of the oil squirters are working um, up here. Uh, before we go any further with it, need to make sure we've got oil pressure. We don't want to have another RB30 incident where we spend three days trying to get oil pressure. Um, so yeah, once I do that, then we can finally get the rocket cover back on and yeah, start buttoning some of this, this up because we're getting very close to actually starting this bad boy. Obviously we need to do some wiring and stuff, but we'll sort that out. Next video, this was the fuel filter that I want to get rid of. Uh, she's going to go underneath the car at the back, so I'm going to get rid of that ugly looking bracket there. Um, this area here, I'm going to either make a cover for or something to try and at least neat it up to start with. Uh, there is going to be a pod filter and stuff in here. Um, and I do have to mount another relay or two here, so two relays for the fans. Um, the relays for the fuel pump will go in the boot, uh, but I'll discuss that not today. So let's see if we can Turn this key and see if this engine will turn over. Hopefully. Pretty confident it's gonna. Okay. Is it going to turn over and be very easy and simple and not cause me a headache? Let's find out. Come on, SR20, you can do it. Yep. Much excited. Don't worry about that noise, that's the lack of oil pressure. You could hear it quieting up there. It was it was very noisy. I think that was lifters might have bled down. So that was rightly as. It made oil pressure. You could hear it there. It was it was very noisy. SR20s. Um, 
I've never had a quiet SR20 lifter wise. Um, I'm guessing the lifters just bled down because it's been a couple of weeks since the engine got put together since I originally bled them. But yeah, it's almost like, oh, I don't like that sound. But um, yeah, you can obviously hear it make oil pressure there. And once the, the lifter like noise went away on it, um, it's it's definitely a bit noisier because it's got rock arm stoppers and stuff in it, I think. It just seems to echo through them a bit for some reason. Um, but yeah, have a look at this. Oil pressure. I love SR20s. Also, how freaking exciting to have it crank over for the first time, SR20 life. It's it's definitely like, yeah, once again, don't get my hopes up because VN destroyed me last time. But um, yeah, it's definitely one of those milestones where you can go, engine turns over by itself, tick, on the key, tick. Uh, I've definitely got some wiring to do, don't get me wrong, but it's the exciting part of the, uh, the journey. <laughs> Show me that oil pressure, baby. <sighs> you Very, very stoked. I'm excited. I would be lying if I said I wasn't excited. All right. For now, that will do. Let's get rid of, get rid of that gas. So yeah, that's like I said. A very big milestone. Very, very, very excited about that. Jeez, I might, like, I might not sound excited, but I am. Trust me. I'm stoked. Uh, but yeah, she's, uh, she's ready to rock and roll. So we can put a uh, rocker cover back on now for good. Rocker cover going on to stay on. Um, everything, like I said, looks like it's oiling up really well. Uh, there's oil where it should be. I can now check the oil because there's obviously oil in the filter. Um, but first, I'm going to modify that. I'll probably pick back up here, maybe next video. Uh, depends. I might get, I might get a little bit of work done before, uh, before next week's video because I want to hopefully. Jeez, I don't want to jinx myself. I want to get some wiring and some fuel stuff done next uh, next videos. Uh, so anyway, like I said. Uh, I'm going to Tail and Bend Drifting this weekend, and if you're in SA and you want to come for a ride, uh, you can buy tickets. I'll chuck a link below uh, on the Drifting SA page. Um, but yeah, I'm excited. Very excited this is, this is turning over by itself. Uh, like I said, also, the car's coming along really well, so I'm stoked on it. Also, uh, yeah, also, 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 don't stress. Those blue leads aren't staying, everyone. Don't worry about it. Um, I should just quickly touch on that while I'm dribbling. So this bad boy is going to sit right in, kind of like that. Then that little hose is going to go like that. Once I mark it and we work out where exactly it's going to sit, so that it will just come straight through there, into there. Ah, getting sidetracked again. Going to wrap this video up here. Uh, yeah, if I don't see you at Tail and Bend on the weekend uh, at Drifting SA round four and five, I'll see you next week. Thanks for watching, Legends.